A gun violence prevention group out of Seattle is being sued after a man was shot and killed during a court-mandated anti-violence meeting. The victim's family argues that the group, in their anti-gun crusade, failed to provide adequate security while holding meetings with known criminals. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to start right off today by telling you that the victim in this story is by no means an innocent bystander, at least before the meeting. But it is an interesting and ironic culmination between anti-gun tactics, gun-free zones, and so-called crime diversion programs that West Coast states and a few blue East Coast cities have been experimenting with. I'm also not going to completely badmouth criminal diversion programs because some of them do have merit. When I was still working as a psychotherapist in my pre-mom life, I spent three years at a nonprofit where I worked with men and women on probation and parole and saw firsthand how cycles of poverty, having no skills training, and jail time becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where people get thrown back into the world without any skills to do anything but crime and then think they have no other options to survive or provide for their families. It's a legitimate problem. That's definitely not the case all the time, but it does make things really difficult for the folks who do want to do something different and better with their lives. So basically, they can be helpful but there is a time and a place, and these programs need to remember who they're working with and that they might have enemies. I mean, it was, it was really awkward when I had a blood and then a crip <laughs> back to back, and they would pass each other in the waiting room. They were precautions that were taken. And sometimes restraining orders and trespassing orders or just people not allowed to wait in the office. It was a thing that had to happen. Anyways, that is exactly what the group failed to do in this story. Now, before I get into exactly what happened, I'd like to give a shout out to the Attorneys on Retainer program from the Attorneys for Freedom. You don't have to follow the daily news to know how important it is to have a lawyer on your side when it comes to anything related to firearms. We also know from a couple of high profile cases that even with self-defense insurance, a lawyer isn't guaranteed. Now, obviously that doesn't apply in this case, but it's still something to think about. The Attorneys on Retainer program is working to fill that void of making sure that you are covered for legal defense if a self-defense incident happens. It's literally a program to retain legal counsel rather than an insurance program that has all kinds of exclusions in the fine print. And we have been seeing the consequences of that fine print coming to life. Attorneys on Retainer has you covered for misdemeanors, felonies, appeals, and even bail bonds. It doesn't even matter if you were in a gun-free zone or it happened in a state that doesn't exactly like to grant constitutional rights. Unlike insurance companies, their only requirements are that the incident happened after purchasing coverage and that you reasonably acted in good faith. So switch over from your existing self-defense coverage and head on over to my link down in the description where you can use code LURIEDALL to get $50 off your signup. Now, according to both news and court documents, 19-year-old Omari Wallace was facing felony robbery charges in King County, Washington. So again, not exactly innocent, but prosecutors allowed him to be diverted into a program called Community Passageways instead of going to jail. As part of this agreement, he was court ordered to attend meetings with the group. In March of 2021, he went to the orientation meeting at a local church when a rival walked in and shot him several times in a targeted attack. The gunman, a 22 year old, was later shot and killed by a SWAT team while officers were trying to serve him with a homicide warrant. Now, according to court documents, 40 people were at the meeting. The lawsuit alleges that despite knowing violent criminals were in attendance, no officers were present and there was zero security at the meeting. The family says that knowing the attendees have a history of violence and have enemies with a history of violence, there should have been some form of security. The irony is that the group is also anti-gun and security would have required people with guns. 
Nevertheless, according to the lawsuit, Community Passageways had agreed to provide security to keep attendees safe, but failed to actually do so? Like I said, supposedly there was zero security to the point that someone off the street with no connection to the program was able to enter the building with a gun, mosey on up to the second floor, locate and identify Wallace, shoot him a bunch, and flee the scene with no interference at all. Which, oddly enough, is a perfect demonstration of how gun-free zones work. On top of it, the group's staff and members allegedly refused to cooperate with investigators, so it forced the county prosecutor to go through special legal proceedings to try and get documents and interviews that might lead them to the shooter. Who well, it seems was a pretty bad dude. The group claimed that helping in the murder investigation of one of its own members would ruin their credibility with their criminal clients, which it does have some validity to it, but also shows that they will protect the criminal non-member over their criminal members who are, at least in theory, there to get away from criminal life. Which also doesn't seem like a really good way to retain clients. The organization wrote a letter to the prosecuting attorney's office trying to get out of subpoenas by arguing, Developing a reputation as an investigatory pipeline for law enforcement, despite being inaccurate, would put an end to Community Passageway's life-changing and wide-ranging work in the community. Again, I get that they might be hesitant to work with law enforcement. It was always a fine line that I had to walk when I had clients who were literally Bloods and Latin Kings. But I gotta report something to their probation officer. Which always made court-mandated treatment very interesting. But if one of them had gotten shot and killed, I would have absolutely worked with investigators as much as HIPAA would have allowed, because unlike the impression this nonprofit is giving, I cared about my clients. Luckily, that was not anything that ever happened. Government documents show that Community Passageways gets about $14 million in funding every year. According to their website, their mission is to divert youth and young adults out of the criminal justice system and give them an opportunity to receive housing, jobs, apprenticeships, internships, and support systems from the community so that we can put them in a place to be successful. They claim to have been able to shave off 125 years from members' prison sentences and get two-thirds of their clients out of any prison time at all. What they don't list is numbers for how many of their clients were able to find gainful employment, learn skills or a trade, or get education, despite that allegedly being their main goal. Which makes me a little suspicious. They're also part of the county's Office of Gun Violence Prevention, where they say their mission is to, quote, cure the disease of gun violence by letting their members get shot during meetings. What they did do <laughs> was turn the shooting into a press opportunity, where an AP report from July of 2022 said that the program's founder reacted to the shooting by finding the leaders of rival gangs and paying them all to take a month-long vacation in two separate cities across the country, so long as they agreed to go to therapy for that one month. In that report, they said that they wanted to turn that into a new program and use that as their standard, as they said it was a success, as 13 of these 16 gang members hadn't faced any new charges in the few months that they had been back in Seattle. I am a little more skeptical, as a month of therapy is literally nothing. That's barely enough time to put together treatment goals, let alone do an entire course of therapy. That's not how that works. Despite having record high homicide rates, the group is asking the Biden administration for $30 million in funding to send more gang members on one month therapy vacations. That'll do it. The lawsuit is being brought by Wallace's parents, son, the son's guardian, and an attorney for his estate. It also names a second nonprofit called Urban Impacts as a defendant. This will be a fun one to watch, as it will have a lot of implications for expectations of gun-free zones. Or at least for the people who say, no guns allowed. That is it for this video, guys. Please do all of the algorithm things. Leave a comment down below, ring that notification bell, and as always, thanks for tuning in and happy shooting.